Hey guys, this is Allison, and today I am going to be doing my review of the 104 slash 13 Prom Faya. I really enjoyed this episode, you guys. It's definitely one of my favorite season finales, for sure. I thought it was amazing, and so let's just get started. So, I just have so many emotions right now. Oh my gosh, you guys, so many emotions. I just thought it was a fantastically written episode, really well directed episode. The cast was amazing. Like there was just so many things that I loved about this. So basically we um, are taken to where they have like, I think it's now they have like, uh, like 10 hours left until like prime fire. I believe it's 10. Um, and so, you know, you have Raven trying to get the rocket ready with Harper and Amori and Echo. And then you have like, uh, Monty and Murphy like go off to try to get the generator from the bunker from the old bunker that Mon that Murphy was in We have Bellamy and Clark like trying to work together to figure out like okay like how can we have enough food for everybody like whatnot and It was just so exciting. So I want to go just some highlights um, So we have like a short scene of the of the bunker like Octavia's there with Bellamy she's talking to him and she's like hey like I can't do this on my own like I don't I'm not a leader like all this stuff which I feel like was good to see Octavia's like being real with her emotions I'm um, not just trying to like put on this fake like mask of like everything's great I'm this badass warrior like I thought it was great I got to see her get emotional and like say I love you to Bellamy which to me was a huge moment I still I'm not a big Octavia fan. It's more of a writing problem for me. But I feel like it was still great that she, you know, said I love you to her brother. Even though she's, like, treated him like crap for two seasons now, at least she was vulnerable in that moment with her brother Bellamy. And it just, it just goes to show you that, like, as much as I hate Octavia, like, I love Marie. Like, Marie, like, kills every scene like it doesn't matter if she's doing like a fighting scene or if she's doing like an emotional scene she just kills it like every time and so i really feel like that rawness of that emotion and of that like goodbye between her and bellamy was just so beautiful and it was emotional but it wasn't like over dramatic and that's just again like props to marie again bob is amazing like he did a really good job as bellamy i thought he was great you know, and so, like, even though, like, he knows his sister has done, like, been treated him, like, horribly, like, he still loves her and still treats her. And it's just a good lesson and just mercy. And, again, that is not condone or make it okay what she did to him, but it just shows what a good character Bellamy is. It doesn't matter, like, you know, what someone does to him. Like, he's going to keep going and keep moving forward. Um, okay, so then we have the whole, like, Monty Murphy thing, and so that's a really interesting, like, pairing, because Murphy is, like, he's a, like, he's a survivor. He's very much, like, a Slytherin, where he's cunning and, like, very sarcastic and does what he, he only really, Murphy only really cares about him and Amori surviving, and so when it's him and Monty going to the bunker to get the generator, it was just... It started off a little rocky, and then, like, the hug at the end, like, was really nice. Holly went to, like, rescue him, and I was like, oh, my gosh, like, Monty, like, no, like, I cannot deal with any more people being killed off this season, like, so I'm really glad that, like, Bellamy and Monty, Bellamy and Murphy, like, went back to get Monty. I thought that was a great moment. Um, yeah, I really liked, you know, Raven's, like, in charge and, like, you know, dueling out, like, res responsibilities, and I loved that little moment between her and Bellamy, like, when she is, like, saying, like, I can't do this, or I'm not smart enough, I don't know what to do, like, and I just thought it was just a great moment, just to show, like, how vulnerable Raven really is, like, no one really gets to see that side of her that much, like, she keeps it hidden away, and so to see her get vulnerable, to get upset, to cry, like, it was just huge, and just spoke volumes, and I just loved how, you know, like, Clark was, like, you know, like, just was there for her, and then Bellamy, you know, sat her next to her, and he was, like, you know what, like, you are smart and you've saved us so many times like you can do this like just think about it and I just was it was just such a great like comforting moment I think it's great that Raven has so many friends who are supportive but that was a great scene um yeah that was really just uh emotional like just seeing her get upset and whatnot um and I did think it was you know it was just so suspenseful like them trying to get to like, onto the little, like, ring to get to the old arc or whatever. And then, like, 
like all of the delinquents, it was just such a great moment where like all of the delinquents are sharing oxygen because they're running out. Like it was so moving because even though there wasn't like any very, there was very little dialogue. Like you could tell the tension. You could tell like that it was suspenseful, that they're all trying to help each other survive. And it was just such like a moving moment. I loved that moment of, of the delinquents, you know, sharing oxygen, trying to survive with each other. I thought it was a great moment. Um, so Echo did not die as I predicted. Um, she didn't die. She's still alive. She went up with them to space. And I do feel like it was Echo showing vulnerability when she is scared to go to space. I still don't trust her. And I just, I don't really like Echo as a character. But again, like, I love Tazi. I think Tazi is amazing as Echo. It's because she brings up so many different, like, complexities with Echo. And, you know, like, Echo is a very interesting character. She's complex, you know. Most shows would just write her off as the villain or whatever. But, you know, she does try to help and do what she can. Do I trust Echo? No, I do not. But I feel like it was a good moment with a good, like, encouraging moment with, with Bellamy when he goes to find Echo and she's about to kill herself. And I was like, whoa, like, that's very triggering. Like, I don't want to see that on TV. So I'm glad that they didn't do that and that she didn't kill herself. And Bellamy was like, you know what, like, I know you're scared, but, like, we can do this together. Like, we're all going to be, you know, challenged and whatnot. I thought it was a great moment. And, you know... I loved how, you know, everyone was, you know, like, I think it was like Amori when, like, the the doors have closed and whatnot. Amori's like, can we not skip for, like, another minute? It was just great to show that, like, everyone cares for Clark, but Bellamy, like, definitely is in love with Clark. Um, there were so many good Clark moments, you guys. We were so well fed. I'm like, yes. We were so well fed, you guys. So let's start off with the scene where they're talking about like the allergy blooming and whatnot. And they're talking about like oxymorons, which is such a Bill Mean Clark conversation for sure. And when, um, actually before that, before that, um, when, like, the a very beginning, I was already dead, like, guys, like, the first five minutes, I was like, I can't, um, basically, where, like, Clark's like, oh, did you get my mom on the phone, and mom on the radio, and Bellamy's at the radio went dead, and you could just see, like, Clark, like, crumbling and crying, and Bellamy initiated the hug, and it was so great, it was just such a good moment, you guys, like, he was comforting her, and she, like, wrapped her arms around his waist and just was like you know like just was emotional and like it was just such a great comforting moment you guys I love the Ballard hug I think they're just so great and just shows that how just to show how close they are how close they are and how they're going to support each other and I thought it was great you know how like Bellamy was broken for Clark like he felt Clark's pain and it's just like ugh you guys, like, we were so well fed. The hug was great. And then we go to the conversation where they're doing, like, the whole oxymoron conversation. I thought that was really well done as well. It was just funny and quirky. And then, holy crud, you guys, like, when Melanie's like, yeah, and so is Cold Sweat. And then he, like, caresses her face. I was like, ah, like, this is, y'all, I freaked out, like, freaked out oh my gosh that was so unexpected I wasn't expecting that and I was like wait what like I had to like pause I had to pause the episode just to be like what? it was great you guys and it just goes to show you that like they can be funny with each other and comforting and just get encouragement from from one another and then um the the last like scene where like Clark is like you know what like if anything happens to me and like Bellamy is like nothing's gonna happen to you and she was like no I need you to hear this like it was just like really emotional because like this episode definitely I mean like I feel like this was confirmed before but actually like in the episode it was confirmed that the head and heart dynamic that Bellamy and Clark share I feel like it was just great you know how like Clark was like you know like Bellamy like you have a great heart and then she freaking like touches his chest and I'm like I can't y'all like I cannot deal with all this like unnecessary touching but it's great like oh yes I'm on board for this and then she's like but I need you to use like your mind too and I was like oh because Bellamy is known for being the heart Clark is the mind and so um it just was it just was great how like Clark was like no I need you to I need you to use both 
And that's what Bellamy had to do when he left Clark. Dude, he freaking, like, waited for her. And I was like, no. He freaking, like, waited for her, you guys. And, like, he had to be the, he had to be the head and the heart and be like, you know what? Like, this is what Clark would have wanted. Like, she wants us to leave so we could be safe. And, like, it was just like, oh, my gosh. Like, him, like, closing the door was a huge parallel to season one when Clark had to close the door on Bellamy. And then Bellamy had to close her, close the ship on Clark. It was just, like, emotional, and then they get up to space, and then, like, um, Bellamy and Raven are talking, and, like, Bellamy, like, looks out at, like, the Earth that's covered by, like, the Holy Prime Fire, and I'm like, I can't, like, and he's, like, looking for her, and then he thinks that she's dead because he doesn't know, and, like, and, like, Raven's, like, I don't know if we can do this without Clark. And then, like, Bellamy's, like, I'm not going to let her die in vain. Dude, I freaking, like, cried so hard. I was, like, no. Because they don't know, like, if they are, like, alive or not. Like, Clark doesn't know if her friends are alive. Bellamy doesn't know if her friends are alive either. Like, his friends are alive either. And so it was just such, like, an emotional moment. Um, and how he was, like, no, like, we're going to make this work. Like, she sacrificed herself for us, like. I'm not going to let her die in vain. I was just like, I can't. Y'all, I'm like so far and deep. And I've never really cared about an OTP before this. And this has definitely been like a huge OTP for me. Um, then like, then we get the, then we get the, like the time jump. So basically they've gone six years and seven days. I think it's pretty interesting how they put the seven days on there, which that must have some, some significance. So six years have passed instead of five. I thought it would be five. It's six years. So Bellamy has been like up with the up with the delinquents for six years. Then Clark is down like all by herself, and I'm like, oh my gosh, like I can't. She's like sketching, and then she goes, dude, she freaking like grabs the satellite and like she radioed Bellamy for six years, you guys, six flipping years. Like when will your OT be ever, you guys? Like she's like Bellamy, like I don't know why I keep doing this, but I guess it's just to keep myself sane. I'm like I can't. Like she doesn't even know if like if if Bellamy can like hear her, and but she still does it because like she can't move on. Like Bellamy is her hope, and like she can't move on without him. And so then we get introduced to the whole like child thing. I think it's great that she is Maddie. Um. Because she wasn't alone. Basically, Maddie is a nightblood that Jason said that Clark found during the six years that she was on Earth. Um, so I'm really glad that they gave her a child just because I feel like that brings out a whole different side of Clark. Again, like, she never had a sibling. So to bring out that, like, maternal instinct, like, in Clark, which is great. I'm really excited just to see, like, her interactions with Maddie and how they met. And, like, then whenever they get reunited with the rest of the delinquents, like, how that's going to factor in. Um, it's going to be really great, you guys. And then, oh my gosh. So we see this like rocket come. And I'm like, that's them. It's Bellamy. And then Clark is like, I see you. And I'm like, I can't, y'all. And then it's not Bellamy. It is Cardigan's uh, prisoner ship from the mining colony. And I was like, oh my gosh, you guys. Like, what? So Jason has revealed that the mining colony prisoners are gonna probably going to be the new villains um, of not villains, but, like, the big bad or the new problem, whatever, in season five, and it's going to be great, like, I'm really excited to see how that's going to work, and, like, also Jason said that the, um, space team have not been captured by the mining colony, so there's a reason, like, I just want to know, like, why they haven't come, come down, you know, like, and Clark even says, like, it's been a year since it's been safe to come down. I'm like, I can't. Y'all, like, it's just so emotional. But their reunion is going to be so just emotional and heartbreaking. And I'm like, dude, like, six years. Like, if they can wait six years to be reunited, then I can wait nine months till season five. I'm so glad we got to season five, guys. This season was just amazing. I really, really enjoyed it. Um, and also, I'm glad we get a season five because Jason revealed that um, the season finale for season four would have, would have, would have been this series finale, which I could not even have handled that. I would have been so mad and like throwing pillows and stuff. I hate unresolved series finales. So I'm going to get a season five, you guys. Again, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys have a great day and just have a good day, guys. Bye.